All right, so today we're going to talk about one of the classic uh, greedy algorithms in, in, uh, in this class, uh, Dijkstra's algorithm. We've already had some kind of limited discussion of Dijkstra's algorithm uh, in, in uh, the synchronous sessions. Uh, and some people are doing projects that are based on some, on, on some variations of Dijkstra's algorithm or Dijkstra's algorithm itself. Um, but today, you know, I really want to go through and uh, explain, you know, how Dijkstra's algorithm works, what it's for, and, uh, and what about it makes it a greedy algorithm. So we've already seen in one of the synchronous sessions an algorithm called Floyd's algorithm. So if you recall, Floyd's algorithm takes in a directed and weighted graph and it returns the, uh, a list of all the shortest path lengths between all pairs of nodes. So Floyd's algorithm solves a problem that's called the all pairs shortest paths. So that's the all pairs shortest path problem. Uh, Dijkstra's algorithm, on the other hand, says I'm going to forget about all pairs and I'm going to focus on a single node. So Dijkstra, and by the way, Dijkstra, this is a, this is a Dutch name, is my understanding. And that D-I-J says, makes the, the die sound, so Dijkstra. Uh, Dijkstra's algorithm, uh, Dijkstra's algorithm says Rather than thinking about all pairs, I'm just going to focus on one, uh, one node that I care about. So we could call Dijkstra's algorithm an algorithm for the single source shortest paths. Okay, so here's a graph. I'll just write a graph down, and then we'll we'll think about uh, we'll think about what the what what kind of, what the question is that we're asking about this graph. So there's a graph. Okay, so I've just drawn a graph uh, on six nodes. Uh, it is a weighted graph, so we'll interpret the weight of each edge as a cost. And what we want to understand is what are the what are the shortest paths from everywhere to A. So some of these are obvious, right? So if I say what's the shortest path from B to A, uh, it should be fairly clear that we're just talking about that single link, right? The single link that has a cost of two. Uh, it's easy to verify just as a human looking at the graph that there's no better way of getting from B to A than just going there directly. And if you did that, the cost would be 2. Uh, likewise, the shortest path from C to A is the single link, uh, and then this has a cost of 1. Um, but then there's some others that may not be, may not be quite so obvious. Um, so, for example, the shortest path um, from E to A goes down the right, right? It goes down through C rather than through B. Um, but if these costs were low, right, if this was a zero and this was a zero and this was a zero, then it could very well be that the shortest path from E to A actually actually went this way and used a lot of a lot of links, right? Uh, but but despite the fact that it used a lot of links, it would have had a shorter uh, a shorter uh, a shorter or a, a lower cost, a lower weight, total weight. Okay, so the idea is we want to find these shortest paths. Um, how do we go about doing this? So first, let's think a little bit about the structure of this problem. And, um, and we can kind of leverage some of the ideas we've thought about before, especially some of the stuff we were thinking about in, in the DP uh, unit of the course, um, to think about how this, uh, how this might actually work. So first, it's worth just mentioning that this problem has something that looks like optimal substructure. right? There's, there's an aspect of this where we can say that, uh, that long shortest paths contain small shortest paths, okay? So let's, let's think about this. So suppose I gave you, suppose I gave you a shortest path and, and, and the shortest path that goes from F to A and I said it looks like this. So I say, suppose, suppose I say, uh, let, me, let me see here. Suppose I say uh, the, the F to A shortest path, and so SP, I'll, I'll use that to mean shortest path for now, um, is something like this. It's F and then D and then some other nodes like, you know, other stuff in here. And then from here it goes uh, to B and then to A. Okay. Suppose this is the case. Um, and then I ask you, what's the shortest path from D to A? And you say, aha, the, the shortest path from D to A uh, goes over here, goes to node C, and then it just goes directly to A, right? So the question is, 
could could you be right right could this blue path that i've drawn be the shortest path from d to a if the white the white nodes that i've drawn are the shortest path uh, or constitute a shortest path from b to or from f to a so the question is could could d c a be uh, the the d to a shortest path if f d dots b a is the f to a shortest path and i hope it's obvious that the answer is no right if it were if if that blue path were the shortest path from d to a then it would be a shorter path than the white path that we drew above uh, the, the, where, where, that we already have a path from from d to a okay so if if it is true if it is true that that the uh, the white path starting at f and going to d and then going through these intermediate nodes b to a if that is actually the shortest path from from f to a then there can't be any deviations along that path that 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 allow you to to, to have a better path Okay, so this just looks like optimal substructure, right? This is saying the tails of optimal solutions are optimal. Okay, so there's there's an element of something that looks like the DP uh, themed optimal substructure um, that's that may be useful here. Um, so now let's think a little bit about what a, what a greedy algorithm for this problem might look like. Um, and one first first place you might start in, in terms of thinking about a greedy algorithm is you might say, hey, let's let's just do something like a DFS, right? A depth first search on this. Um, and so let me copy this network uh, down down below, and we'll think about what a DFS uh, what a DFS would look like. Okay, so here's our sort of our first sort of our first idea. First idea. Uh, use use DFS. Okay, DFS has kind of a greedy flavor to it, right? You you just take the the shortest next path that you have access to, and and you go from there. And so, what does a DFS look like in this? Well, let me just let me just draw a graph um, that kind of expresses how a DFS works on this uh, on this graph, right? The the DFS starts on a, and so we'll start all these algorithms on a because it's always going to, you know, that's going to always be kind of the root um, of all of the paths, if if you want. So you know, a DFS first goes from a to c, and then uh, there's only one option leaving c, so it goes from c to e. Once it's sitting on e, it says, well, I've got two node, two edges leaving. One of them has a, a lower cost, so I'll take the one with the lower cost, which is this one. Now there's only one choice, only one choice, and then I'm done. Okay. So what a DFS does. Uh, is it constructs this graph. Okay, so a DFS says, here's all the nodes. I already have the graph. I might as well just uh, paste it. <coughs> okay, so the DFS says, here's, here's all the nodes. Um, I'm going to just... Uh, I'm going to just delete those two edges, basically, and and then return this as my set of shortest paths. So I'll make the claim that hey, my shortest path from C to A is uh, is just the direct edge, right? Which is correct. Then I'll make the claim that my shortest path from E to A is just that that path there. Then I'll make the claim that F is 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 this way, and so on. And then in the end, I'll make this kind of outrageous claim that my shortest path from B to A is the one that goes through D, F, E, C, and A, right? And so, so this is completely wrong, right? That it's very clear looking at the upper, at the graph above, that the shortest path from B to A is just the direct edge. But a DFS-inspired search here, or, or a DFS-inspired greedy looking algorithm uh, would tell us that the shortest path from B to A is actually the one that visits all the other nodes first, right? Which is clearly clearly incorrect. So, so this is wrong. It's wrong uh, in an obvious way uh, because it, this this uh, this approach seems to suggest that a very long path is actually the shortest path. So the question is, what what's the problem, right? Uh, how how is the DFS going wrong? So. Why did DFS fail? 
And it's important to see that the DFS is not thinking big picture enough. Okay. Uh, the DFS is almost making this assumption that because the shortest path from C to A is the direct edge, and E is connected to C, that the shortest path from E to A must be connecting through C first. Right? And it's completely ignoring the possibility that there are other ways to get from E to A. So in the next video, we're going to reformulate the, the, the single source shortest paths problem um, in a way uh, that will help us see kind of what the solution needs to look like.